This is Peter Beckman saying. The proton pack is not a toilet. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back to the Proton Pack is Not a Toy. My name is Matt, and this is episode 7 of the Venkman Conversion, where I'm taking my Proton Pack and changing up some of the details of it to make it look more like the Ghostbusters 2 version of the Venkman Hero Pack. On today's episode, I will be taking my old LC2 Alice frame and swapping it out with an LC1 Alice frame. This LC2 frame is really the only frame I have ever used on a fully built proton pack going back to when this was a foam core pack and when it was an MDF and then when I upgraded it to aluminum and fiberglass all iterations of my pack have been with this LC2 frame. I bought it because I read on GB fans that if you get an LC2 frame it's accurate to Ghostbusters 2. And I was happy with that and that's why I bought it. It was cheaper at the time and a little easier to find an LC2. Uh, the only issue is with that statement about it being accurate to Ghostbusters 2 is the semi-hero packs had LC2 frames, but the hero packs still had the LC1 frames that they used from the first movie. These were never swapped out on the hero packs along with the shoulder straps. So the straps in the frame from Ghostbusters weren't swapped out for Ghostbusters 2 on the hero packs. The only thing that changed was the kidney pad and waist belt were upgraded to LC2s for the hero packs. There, there's more padding, there's a little bit more robust clip there for the waist belt. Uh, if you're looking for pictures to see the differences um, on screen grabs and stuff, if you look at the straps, that's the big tail. On an LC1, you'll be able to see that there's this overlap, kind of an inverted V-shape there on the top of the strap. And then on an LC2, it's just this straight line that's stitched on there. So that's the biggest tail. Easier to see that than it is to see the differences in the actual frames. Uh, but if you are in the in the wild hunting for a frame, then you can see that one of the big differences on the LC2, this crossbar does stick out quite a bit, whereas on the LC1, it's pretty much flat all the way across. Another thing, uh, I painted this one black. Um, I don't think that black was... An available color for the LC2 frames. You can see them mostly in green, sometimes in other colors, um, but the standard black is what the LC1s came in, so you don't have to paint LC1 frame. So this was a green one, like I said, I did paint it black. So what I'm going to be doing in today's episode is taking off this neck roll. I'll put that on the new frame. And then I will take off the kidney pad and waist belt. That will go on the LC1. I've got, like I showed you, a new set of LC1 straps for the shoulders that I was given by a viewer here on the channel. And I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. You know who you are. And um, there's a couple of other things that I'll go over here on this episode. And I'll get to those in just a second. One thing I wanted to show you though is something that I've already done and you can kind of see it if you're looking here in the foreground. If you can see the bare aluminum here on the um, motherboard here in front of me, this is something that I've already taken care of. When they first built the proton packs for Ghostbusters, there were spacers in between the motherboards and the Alice frames. For the two holes at the bottom, there were two and a half inch by one and a half inch blocks. And then for the upright, there was a two and three quarter inch by three quarter inch half circle, sometimes called half moon spacer. When they redid the packs for Ghostbusters 2, they 
took off those spacers which had been on the pack when they were originally painted. So when those spacers were taken off, the bare aluminum was still showing and they did not paint over that. So that is one of the details that I am adding to my pack here. I'm not repainting anything, but what I did decide to do was to make templates and put those over the holes in the right places and then sand the paint off of my motherboard in those areas to make it look like those original spacers from the first Ghostbusters movie had been there, had been painted over, and then taken off. And so that's the look that I'm trying to mimic here. Like I said, I made my own templates, put those over the right places, taped them in place, and then first used a sanding block to take off most of the paint, and then I went back afterwards with a X-Acto knife to kind of trim up the edges and make them look nice and clean. Uh, going back and look at the pictures, the lines aren't super clean uh, where the spacers were taken off, so I probably have mine a little too detailed on the edges there, but I'm happy with the way that it turned out. So you can see here how it turned out with those sanded off in those three specific places. The next thing I'm going to do is to drill a hole here on the upright of the LC1 frame. The original packs had the two mounting points here at the bottom, but they drilled holes in the upright to have the third mounting point to go from the frame to the motherboard. This can be a little dicey if you take out too much material or if you're using a frame that is low quality. Sometimes these can snap right at that point. So you don't want to drill a hole too big and uh, you just got to be careful with it because you don't want all of your hard work on the back of your pack to be hitting the ground because you didn't take care of your frame. Um, I've already gone and measured the distance between the crossbar and the hole on my LC2 frame and in everything for the crossbar is lined up. And so it was about two and three quarter inches, I believe. And I've drawn a line there on this painter's tape. And then I went and I already test fitted with the spacers this frame on my motherboard. And everything did line up. So I'm not going to want to drill this hole unless I've already test fit everything like that. So that I don't have to go back and re-drill it in a different spot and then further weaken my frame. With that being said, I do have my drill ready to go. I'm using a 7 30 seconds drill bit and then I'm going to be putting a quarter 20 uh, bolt through that hole. So it's going to be pretty tight. I might have to use the bolt to loosen it a little bit once I do have it drilled, but I would rather it be tight than to be uh, too loose and wobbly. So that being said, I'm going to lay this down here. And I don't know if you can see on the video, but this is the line that I have uh, marked for it. There is an indentation that goes right down the middle as well on these frames that is already built into the frame. So the drill bit's naturally going to try to find its way to that spot that's why I'm drilling it from this side and uh, as long as I keep it in line here on my line that I drew we shouldn't have any problems with it being off centered from where I want it to be. I'm going to go slow because sometimes the drill bit will bite and twist the frame out of your hand. I don't want that to happen I just want to get a nice smooth clean cut clean circle All right, now I've got my hole. So, trying to be very careful, very, very slow. I did get my hole to go all the way through. Maybe not dead center on that line, but within 
an eighth of an inch. It was really close. So I don't think it'll be a big deal lining up with my motherboard through the spacer. going to have that snug fit that I want. That's perfectly the size of that bolt. So that's all the drilling I'm doing today is that one hole there in the LC1 frame. Next thing I'm going to do is to take the waist belt and kidney pad off of the LC2 frame, and then I'll transfer that over to the LC1 frame. I did make a video a long time ago about how to take these off and replace them or put them on. And uh, you may have seen that here on the channel. Uh, I haven't done one of those since then. So I do have to pay attention to the way that it comes off and try to put it back on again the same way. The way the pads are, there's a, I don't know if you can see, there's a little folding part right there. And uh, when that stretches it out to be nice and tight. But when you fold it over, that's when you can really see the way that the, uh, the webbing straps around the uh, clip there. So the excess goes around the back and then it comes through on this side through this slot. And then that folds through on this clip right here. So when I'm going to re-thread it. I'm going to thread it through. Let's see, there's bars. There's one, two, three bars, and then the one that flips over. I'm going to go in under the second bar and then back through in front of the first bar for counting them one, two, three. So I'm pulling that out. And again, if I'm going to replace that, I'm going to go back in and back out under that second bar right there. Now, these just come out Through the slots over here and here. So this whole part comes off. I'm just going to lay it down the same way I had it so I can transfer it over to this other frame. And then these just slide out I'm going to leave it face down and take the LC1. It helps to kind of leave those flapped open right here for these to fit through. It gets kinked a little bit if you have them turned. As you can kind of see there. There. go a little bit more there so pull it tight as I can on either side now I'm going to rethread this
Okay, so I'm back to the situation I was in before. Take this, go in between two and three, and then back up between two and one. And then pull it tight. And then I'm going to take this part, and that's going to thread back through here again. Pull it reasonably tight. Kind of have this set towards the middle because when you flop this over, it's going to really tighten it and hold it in place. And you can slide it around a little bit, but that about does it. Hopefully you were able to see a little bit of that while I was working. But for a lot of people, that's a tough thing to get right. So again, I do have a tutorial video that's just about that. So if you weren't able to see it very well there, check out that video uh, on my channel. Next thing I'm going to do is to take my LC1 straps and put them here on my LC1 frame. You can see the inverted V shape here on the strap. Uh, make sure when you put them on that you do have the taper going from your shoulder to your hip. So this is the left side. This is the right side. The difference would be on the stance pack, they were swapped. Uh, some people think it's because the quick release was on the opposite side was the reason that was different for the stance pack because Dana Aykroyd's left-handed. I don't know if that's the reason why, but uh, it might just be a coincidence. To put these on is pretty easy. Um, I did check the details to see which way they went through the frame itself and uh, make sure everything goes through the right holes because you do have a few choices here on the sides, whether you're going to use the circle or the triangle shape and uh, where you want everything to come out. So I'm going to start with the left one. And the detail that I did notice was it needs to come out at the bottom here from the inside. And then the rest of it just goes through this loop. And once you get it all the way through, you just bring it down as tight as you can. Like I said, for the bankman, it's inside out. So then at the top, I'm going to have to pull this out. So again, you want to pay attention to the way this goes. It goes in through the one that's closest to the strap and then back up through the front one farthest from the strap. This part here at the top is going to be covered by the foam. So you can kind of do this part however you want. I usually go in from the front and then around the top. Again, down from the closest one and then back up what would be the front one and then you just want two three or four inches to be kind of sticking out there usually enough to kind of keep the top of the strap away from the frame itself you can kind of match that up to screen grabs if you want that's exactly how far you want those to go. So these are adjustable, but most of the time you're going to be making adjustments right here on your shoulder strap to make sure that they fit tight. So there's the left one. Again, on the bottom, I'm going to go through from the inside. everything through the hole. If you're going to buy straps, 
separate from the pack, it can be hard to match up specific colors. Just do the best you can. Check your stitch patterns. Make sure those are about as close as you can. Most people aren't going to notice the difference. If you're lucky, you can get a frame that still has its original straps on it. That's the best case scenario because those straps most likely will be identical. More often than not, you're going to have to match up the best you can on straps. These aren't 100% identical. But if I hadn't told you that, you probably wouldn't know. So This one has a little bit less material here on the top. So it might not stick out quite as much there. So I can always go back and check that. One extra measure that I like to take on the quick release is to make it not quick release anymore. I like to have the detail of it there on this left shoulder strap. If you pinch this clip out, this comes off. So that's why I say quick release. That's all great, but I don't want this little plastic part that's probably about 50 years old at this point to ever fail on me while I'm wearing the pack. So I like to take a black zip tie and run it through there. And clip that off once I get enough of it in there. So you can't really see it. But then when I put the plastic quick release back in, it's never going to release without me wanting it to. So that's a nice little hack that you can have and not have your quick release releasing when you don't want it to and having your pack swinging off of one of your shoulders without your permission. Clip that off. Kind of turn around the, the head of it, and you can't even really tell that it's there. But even if this comes off, that's not going to easily come apart. Just something I like to add that you might want to add to your pack too, just as a safety measure. The next task is to take the neck pad off of the LC2 frame and then I'm going to transfer that over to the LC1. I found that the gaffer's tape that I used on this, you may have watched the tutorial that I did here on the channel a while back. I'm not super happy with this gaffer's tape. I've kind of asked around to see if anybody has some that holds any better, but I haven't really come up with a good source for it. Uh, one thing that I did find that kind of works is to parts where it does try to peel off on its own. I do put some double-sided uh, kind of scotch tape or I have some super glue tape that you can put in those areas and it will keep it from coming off on its own. So I'm going to try to tape this one up a little bit better. I have a bad habit of using the neck roll to pick it up when my pack is on the ground. Um, so that causes it to kind of have finger marks and be creased up, which doesn't look accurate or good. Um, another thing I've done to kind of keep the circular shape in there, I've put some cardboard tubing in there to kind of help it maintain that shape, which isn't accurate to the real facts, but again, something that I've just done kind of as a hack for myself. So that's removed from LC2. You might notice that it's black here on the ends and on the inside, the heroes actually had white and then they painted over the ends. Um, I do have a white one for my Spingler that I'm going to build for my Max Factory pack. Um, 
GP fans is currently out of the white kind. So I'm just going to continue to use this black version, even though it's not 100% accurate. The tape is going to pull up some of the foam. I'm not too worried about it. If it's just on the surface here on the round part, that's not horrible. I just don't want it taking off too much here on the end caps. A lot of times the hard part can be to get this little area to look right. So I'm going to go this way around in these four spots, and then I'll go back across lengthways to make it look like it's supposed to look. But this is going to help it hold up a little bit better in that area. This is a good time to mention that in Ghostbusters 2, for a lot of the scenes, they did have what is referred to as super straps, where there was a lot more padding that was added to the LC1 straps uh, for later in production of the movie. And then on the neck roll, it was a lot more robust as well. That's not the look that I'm going for with this particular pack although that would be accurate to Ghostbusters 2 and the Thinkman Hero, as you do see it today. Uh, this is also still accurate to have it more closely look like the, the neck roll and the pads from the original Ghostbusters. Uh, in the courtroom scene, and when the guys first show up and start firing on the museum covered in pink slime, those packs still had the original padding on the neck roll and padding on the shoulder straps. Got the lengthwise done, it's still creased a little bit, not too horrible. Now I'm going to do the end caps. This is a lot easier when this frame is not actually on a proton pack. When I first wrapped this one, it was still attached to the motherboard. So hopefully this will go a lot quicker and easier. All right, so that's done as good as it's going to be for now. Like I said, there's creases in here that I wish weren't there. Um, I can always go back and do this when I'm on, not on camera and give myself more time to do it. But you get the idea. Um, I do need to trim a little bit of the excess off the edge so you don't see the white tape on the end there. But for the most part, that's how it's going to look for the foam there on the top of my LC1 frame. Now comes the time we've been waiting for where I'm actually going to put the frame on the motherboard. I have my hardware here. Ready to go. I'll take the frame, kind of lay it in the general area. I have these carriage bolts that a lot of us used a long time ago for our frames. Don't believe these are accurate. I think they're too big. I don't think they were carriage bolts to begin with. They were probably all the quarter 20 bolts. Um, I'm not going to change out the bolts for the bottom here um, just because I already have holes that are drilled that big and I don't want to make that change. Also, these have a square little feature to them at the head, and so that fits in real nicely on the frame itself and keeps it from turning and it really just holds that in place without having to have any kind of washer or anything. So to put them in the proper order for the bottom ones, you have a bolt. If you're going to use the proper type bolt, there probably is a washer underneath it there. But again, I'm not using one because I want the square head there. Bolt then the washer, then the spacer. I believe mine is like three quarters of an inch, maybe an inch. 
Then it goes on to the bare motherboard without a spacer or without a washer. And then on the other side of it, I'm going to put the washer. And then I have a wing nut that I use to connect on the other side there. So let me get both of these set up. And there goes go in the holes right there on the motherboard. Now I'm going to line up the top hole. This one, again, I've got a quarter 20 bolt. I'm going to use the wing nut on it as well. On this one, it is bolt, then a washer. And I believe the correct way to do it is to not have a washer on the other side. I'm going to go spacer. Motherboard hole. And it does line up. So that's always happy. Now, it's going to have a little play here. And as I tighten it, I can kind of direct where exactly I want that to go. So that my motherboard isn't crooked on my back. If you saw the last video, you know that I had a mounting hole here in the split loom. So I'm going to feed this bolt. through that. Washer. Wing nut. That one goes a lot easier because I don't have all that junk in the way. And then again, the top here. Make sure that's in there all the way. And tighten down the wing nut. Then I usually do put a little tape or something over this one just because if any of the wires or the battery or anything get in contact with this, I don't want any issues. I'm sorting anything out or anything, so I usually put a little painter's tape or electric tape on that just for security of that. Turn around, look at the other side. All right, I've got one more thing that I want to do to kind of give this some authenticity. It's not an exact replica of what we're going to see on the Vinkman pack, but if you look closely in some of the pictures on the upright of the Alice frame, there is a piece of masking tape that says Bill M. And I'm going to put tape in that same area. It's generally from here on these little bars down so it kind of is hidden on this part of the upright and it's supposed to look a little torn on the end I'm not exactly sure how far down it goes I'll just tear it at a random spot stick it down and I was kind of debating do I put Bill M on here since I'm making the Vinkman pack or do I put my name and last initial on there? And I've decided I'm going to put my name and last initial just because on my uniform, I have my name on the patch. I don't have Vinkman. So as I am trying to replicate the Vinkman pack, I'm not necessarily trying to be Vinkman. So uh, this is going to have my name and my last initial.
do it in black marker. It doesn't have to look pretty. So there you go. One extra little detail, and that was actually one of the things on my little list of details that I wanted to add to my pack. So that about does it for this episode of the Vinkman conversion. I do have probably four or five more videos at least to do. I'm almost done with the motherboard and all the stuff on the inside here on this side of the pack, not necessarily on the shell side. Um, I do have to put the XLR plate and the electronics and stuff back in here. Um, but there's still a lot to go, so be sure to subscribe if you're enjoying these and learning something, hopefully, and hopefully a little bit entertained by the process. And um, that way you won't miss any that are coming up. Again, I'm trying to do these weekly. So keep an eye out each week to see uh, when these do get posted. And again, I'll be putting them on my Twitter and Instagram feeds as I always do. Thanks again for watching this one. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye.